I was going to make a video on something else, but I came across this article that I feel like I should share with you. 40% of military members had at least one predatory loan during their career in the military. And what's troubling is that almost every one of these loan sharks is located directly across the street from the military base. Fort Campbell, which is the home to the 101st Airborne Division, about half the soldiers stationed there are 25 or younger, and one of the first things young soldiers do is shop for a car. And in my experience, most of them like to shop for a pickup truck or Mustang. And the article stated that the, this one young soldier who joined the army right out of high school went to a dealer and bought a used Ford Escape, but with a car loan that had an extremely high interest rate. And he went to a Navy Federal Credit Union to refinance their car loan, but it wasn't much better there. So he and many other young enlisted folks are paying half of their take home income to their car loans. And if you want to read more, I'll put this Yahoo News article link in the description below. I joined the Air Force in 2005 and I just pulled up my income from 2005 to 2006. And my basic pay for that year was $16,076.12. As an E1 or Airman Basic, it was about $550 every paycheck and we get paid on the 1st and the 15th in the military. I didn't get any BAH or BAS at the time because I lived in the dorms. Um, and if you're a veteran, retiree, active duty guard or reserve watching this video, you know that enlisted are severely underpaid and a lot of times they join straight out of high school and this is the first time they're living on their own. And from my personal experience, it's not just the brand new enlisted guys uh, stationed at their first assignments who are struggling with finances. I've seen NCOs or non-commissioned officers, if you're not familiar with the term, at E5 or E6 that are struggling to pay rent, mortgages, auto loans, or just basic expenses. And what's even more terrifying is that these loan sharks are able to charge them outrageously high interest rates. I know someone from back in the days who bought a used F-150 and his interest rate was 24%. And his truck payment was around $800 a month and it was over half of his paycheck. And we have people deployed downrange, but their families back home still struggle to pay the bills even with the extra incentives. After 17 years in the military, and I have my own personal experience with being stupid with personal finances, the root cause is the lack of financial education in the military. But we can't blame entirely on service members for their financial troubles. There are so many contributing factors to why military members struggle financially, and I, I wanna address them here. Right now, PCSing from one base to another is extremely difficult with high inflation and an expensive housing market if on-base housing isn't available. PCS stands for permanent change of station when military members and their families have to relocate from one base to another. Housing and food allowances are not catching up with the current rate of inflation. The housing market in Las Vegas, for example, is much more expensive than it was before COVID. And service members with families are especially struggling because the BAH they collect doesn't always cover the entire housing expenses. When they have to move, they get some allowances from the military, but it's not always easy to find affordable housing in the new area, especially with the increased rent and home prices. The non-military spouses would also have to find new jobs in the new area and if we're in an economic recession, that could become ex extremely difficult, right? During the move, many families would go from dual income source families to single income source families. A family accustomed to two income streams would most likely struggle with debt repayments and especially if the spouse doesn't find employment right away. And that's going to create even more stress on the family while they're already stressing about uh, about the move and their kids needing to go to a brand new school. And speaking of childcare, it's stupid expensive everywhere you go. And there's no allowance from the government to cover childcare expenses other than maybe getting a discount at the daycare facility. When my daughter was an infant, I remember how childcare was about half of my BAH. And as she got older, childcare costs got cheaper because uh, she became more self-sufficient. When a fa military family has multiple kids that require childcare, then it could be difficult unless the spouse is also working to cover the cost. 
BAS, on the other hand, which stands for Basic Allowance for Subsistence, only pays $406.98 per month to the enlisted in the year 2022, and the allowance remains the same regardless of how many dependents they have in their households. If someone has a family of four, that's $406 they get from the military to pay for groceries. And I can tell you that $400 is nowhere near enough for even a family of three with the current inflation rate. And BAH is the only one that gives them more money if they claim dependents, and it's usually only a difference of $250 or $300, depending on the zip code, zip code that they live in. And people have argued that BAS and BAH are both non-taxable income, so they get to pay lower income taxes. They're not wrong about that. But my argument is that Congress needs to adjust military compensation based on the current CPI data and how many people a service member has in his or her household. So if someone's pay grade is E3 with two years of time in service, the basic pay is $2,296.50 or $27,500 a year in gross income. If that person lives off base, and I'm going to use Vegas as an example. The BAH rate in Vegas is $1,425 or $1,794 with qualified de dependents. BAS is $406.98. Since BAH and BAS are not taxable, it's about $1,500 or $1,600 every paycheck after taxes and deductions. To keep the housing expenses below 25% of the take-home income, that person would need to find an apartment or a house for $750 per month. And I can tell you that you're not gonna find that anywhere in Vegas unless you got a roommate. I always recommend to younger folks without families to get as many roommates as possible to save money. And I have multiple roommates until my daughter was born in 2012. For those that are married with dependents, I've seen them pay almost 50% of their take home income just for rent or mortgages. And let's look at NCOs at E5 and E6 pay rates with eight years of time in service. During that range of 3,500 and 3,900 in basic pay each month, so that's about 2,200 or $2,400 every paycheck with BAH in Vegas and BAS after all the deductions. Even the enlisted leaders are having serious financial issues. And according to the Congressional Research Service updated in 2022 on military families and financial readiness, the enlisted force experiences lower levels of financial well-being than officers. The reserve component members also have a higher risk of experiencing financial instability than those in active duty. And I'll put this link uh, to the research in the description below. And according to the research, a little over one third of service members have zero or less than one month of emergency savings. And about one fifth of members spend all or more of their income on a monthly basis. Junior enlisted are more likely than officers to report low to zero emergency savings, miss credit card payments, or end up with bank overdraft fees. Service members in the reserve components, uh, reserve component are likely to have more debt because they're less likely to access DOD financial education and other resources due to both the, uh, the part-time nature of their military employment and the broader geographical locations of reserve units. In the military, losing control of your finances can lead to administrative sanctions, loss of security clearance, or even involuntary discharge from the military. The research says that in 2014, DOD estimated that 80% of security clearance uh, revocations and up to 4,700 separations each year are related to financial difficulties. And I have personally known people who failed to pay their personal and official credit cards on time and that almost always led to the loss of security clearance and even jobs. I don't deny the fact that some people in the military have made terrible financial decisions. I was one of them and I got myself into $110,000 in consumer debt and I had no idea what I was doing with my money, but I knew if I kept going down that path, I would have eventually lost my job and I eventually broke the paycheck to paycheck cycle and learned to save and invest my money for early retirement. And I'm not here to shame anybody, uh, but I want to address the issue because there are service members who want to drive expensive cars and barely keep up with their car payments. Now, I've also met 
several enlisted members who became millionaires by the time they retired. And I learned a lot from those guys, and they all told me the same secret to becoming millionaires in their 40s. They maxed out their TSP contribution and Roth IRA and saved at least six months of expenses in their emergency fund. And they also automated their budgets so uh, no payments were missed when they were deployed downrange. Their spouses were always on the same page when it comes to personal finances. And But the most important thing they did was to live below their means. However, we all agree that Congress needs to bump up military pay higher than what they originally proposed at 4.6%. So there are many things Congress needs to do ASAP. First, allow service members to collect more BAS if they have one or more dependents. A family of four should be allowed $800 to $1,000 a month in subsistence to cover not just food but for gas and transportation. I would suggest a base pay for BAS and then add an additional $100 for each dependent or something like that. Second, Congress should increase basic pay based on the current CPI data at 8% or more. Enlisted members with families, especially from E1 through E4, are living just above the standard poverty line. And we could spend billions of dollars building ships, planes, or tanks, but you can't win wars without trained professionals. Inflation is here to stay. People are paying items at the 2025 or 2026 prices and it's making military families struggle even more. Third, we need to make financial education or financial literacy classes mandatory at least once a year. And I know, I know most of us in the military hate the word mandatory, but I believe this is necessary when 68% of active duty military households are living paycheck to paycheck. Every military base needs to make financial literacy classes a top priority for every service member and their spouses. Fourth, the Military Lending Act caps interest rates at 36% for service members, but that's still ridiculous. It should be capped at 5% in my honest opinion. We have 18 year olds joining the military right out of high school. You can't expect them to have any credit history. There are loan sharks and predatory car dealers who charge high interest rates to troops who don't know anything about loans or loan repayments. We need an updated MLA to protect military consumers, and we need to make sure these younger troops are getting financial education before they decide to take out any big loans. If you're currently serving in the military, I encourage you to do the following to save more money in your budget. First, try to shop more at the base commissary and BX for reduced prices and use the on-base gym to save money on the gym membership as much as possible. Second, you should never buy a car that you can't afford. You could save money on gas by carpooling with your coworkers to work. When you're ready to buy a car, make sure to buy a used car and you have the ability to pay it off within two years. Don't get peer pressure into buying a brand new pickup truck. It's not worth it when you only make $40,000 or $50,000 a year making a $800 car payment. Third, if you're single, then try to get as many roommates as possible in an apartment or a rent a house. I did this until I made E5 and I managed to save more money every month. If you're looking to buy a house, take advantage of the VA loan by paying a 0% down payment for a house, but you need to keep your mortgage payment under 25% of your take home income. I wouldn't exceed more than 30% and that's still a lot. And if you can't buy an affordable house, it's okay to wait a little bit by renting until you find the right one. Fourth, if you're struggling with finances, find a counselor on base or a financial coach on base and it's completely free for you to use. You can also sign up for a free coaching session with me by visiting firesidechat.com coaching. You can also download my free spreadsheets by visiting firesidechat.com contact with no strings attached. I want you to get the help you need. I'm a veteran who just wants to help other veterans. Trust me, I've been there. I've been down that hole and I've been in $110,000 in debt. And if you want to know more about how to save and invest with TSP, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.